What's up, Marif Merch Fab? Today's video is going to be a little crash course in plasma cutting. So if you've never done any plasma cutting before, uh, you probably think that you just kind of pull the trigger and away you go. But there's definitely some skill to it and there's some tricks and tips of uh, how to get the best results out of a plasma cutter. So uh, I'm going to show you them today. <clears throat> Alright, so first up, I've got two different plasma cutters here. Both do exactly the same thing. They are different, a little bit different in the way they work, different price range. This is an Artec 50 amp. I think this one was about 750 quid. This is an uh, IFL Cut 40P, about 400 for that one. Main difference is the power. This is a 50, this is a 40. This will cut through uh, thicker material. One of the other big differences is this will run off a lot lower compressor pressure, uh, 50 psi working pressure on this. This requires much higher, I think it's 75 or 80. So if you've got a small compressor, um, it's really worth looking into the working pressure of whichever plasma cutter you're going to get because otherwise you're going to be running out of air as you're cutting. If you've got like a big industrial compressor then it's not going to be an issue. You can buy plasma cutters that actually have the compressor built into the plasma cutter. But uh, obviously if you've got a compressor there's no need for that. But if you're doing mobile, mobile stuff then obviously a, a complete unit with a compressor in it would be pretty handy. I've got another cold so you're going to have to put up with snot and dribble I'm afraid. Uh, a couple of other differences. Torches are different on these. This one has like the proper uh, sort of universal plasma torch. This one has its own kind of torch. Uh, they take different, different consumables so you'll have to buy the specific consumables for <coughs> whichever torch you're running. And then yeah on the back you've just got your, your air input with a little uh, catch. Oh shit. I just push that one up into the. That should have a little thing on the bottom of there. This is to catch moisture out of your compressor because uh, plasma cutters work best with really dry air. So I've got two more of those little catch um, tanks on the outlet of my compressor as well. And it uh, seems to work pretty good like that. You can get air dryers and all that sort of stuff if you're going to get really serious about it. This is the IFL torch and uh, this is like a long extended nozzle which is nice. This, that plasma cutter <coughs> is aimed at like for the automotive sort of thing. So it's got a, a higher current pilot arc or something for cutting through paint. And then these little extended um, tips are good for like getting down into little corners. These torches have a lot more parts to them. And then they do, they do a load of different kind of tips for those torches. This one is the Artec one. I only got one kind of uh, tip for this, which looks like that. I'm not sure that these are designed to be dragged directly on the ma material because these, this torch head would come with this little piece that would raise the uh, up off the, off the metal. And uh, I've had people say that you damage the plasma cutter dragging the tip on the metal, but this Artec plasma cutter is five years old. This torch is five years old. You do go through more consumables, um, but this thing still works perfectly. Few reasons why I like to drag the tip directly on the metal rather than like hovering it. You see people do it and they'll hover it just above like if you were using like an oxy torch or something. Um, the reason I will drag it directly on the metal is first reason is it completely blocks out the sight of the arc so you're not looking at the bright arc and uh, secondly, I think you just get a better cut. You, will, you do definitely go through a lot more consumables, but they're pretty cheap. But yeah, I tend to use this one for sort of like thinner stuff, 
car body stuff, the actual plasma cutter itself is a lot smaller and lighter. So if you need to lug it around or move it around. Uh, but if I need to do any heavy cutting, I use the Artec 50. All right, for safety, these are Shade 5 glasses. Um, it's what's recommended for plasma cutting up to 50 amps, I think, or 60 maybe. Respirator. Uh, you want filters that are obviously rated for vapors, fumes, uh, dust, everything. Not just like a little dust mask, because it doesn't actually do anything. And then gloves. I wouldn't recommend that you use this type of glove, but for me personally, I would rather wear a glove where I can feel what I'm doing and I feel like I'm much less likely to slip when I can feel the torch and I can hold the metal with the other hand. If I'm trying to use like thick leather gauntlet type gloves and you can't really feel the buttons on the torch, I feel like I'm more likely to have an accident doing that. So I feel safer in these, but if you're new to plasma cutting, uh, probably not the best idea, just go for like some proper thick uh, leather gloves or similar. So the things that are really gonna make a difference to how good your cut is, is your, your tips need to be in really good condition. If they're all blown out and melted, you're not gonna get a good cut. You need consistent air pressure from your compressor and it needs to be set exactly what the machine recommends. And the third thing is going to be how you, how you uh, hold the torch, how you actually make your cuts, like what you use to make them. So I've got some different uh, thicknesses of steel. From thin to thick, and then I've got a piece of aluminium, or if you're in America, aluminum. And I need to cut a piece of that out as a piece missing off the back of my recovery truck. So. We'll cut these bits of steel, then we'll cut some aluminium, and I'll show you how to get the best results out of it. So, first thing is, uh, when it comes to setting it up, this one runs from minimum of 20 up to 50. This one goes from 10 up to 40. So this, this little one will never get turned down off of 40. And this big one is normally always on 50 unless I'm cutting something really thin. And the reason for that is, uh, so rather than adjusting the current on the machine, you can just adjust your travel speed when you're cutting. And you're going to get the best cuts when you match the travel speed to the current perfectly. So what I mean by that is, I could cut this thick um, piece at 50 amps. I could cut this really thin piece at 50 amps and I could cut this 3 mil piece at 50 amps and get really good cuts on all of them just by adjusting the travel speed of the torch. And it, it's like kind of self-explanatory but obviously you're going to need a slower travel speed to cut through this than you are this. And if you're cutting through this, you're gonna want a really quick travel speed. The same applies that I could turn that down to 30 amps and I could probably still cut through that. But I would have to really slowly drag the tip across it and it would put a massive amount of heat into the part. So you could look at that and think, oh, I need to cut that you know, really low, as low as the plasma cutter can be set. But you'll spend much more time with the torch actually on the piece of metal and you'll put way more heat into it. Whereas if you crank the machine right up and zip across it really fast, you'll put much less heat into it. And when you're cutting, when you're plasma cutting thin stuff, warping is a problem. So I will show you the difference and um, show you how to find that like sweet spot and when you find it, when you get to the point where you've got the travel speed and the power set right 
you'll get a really clean cut. All right, so if you've been watching me work much in my other videos, you'll know <coughs> that I always use a straight edge when I'm plasma cutting. You'll very rarely see me like freehand cutting with a plasma cutter. And that's just because you just don't get very good results with it. Little tip, when you're using a straight edge and you've only got one hand to hold it, put a bow in it, bend it. You can't, probably can't see that it's got a bow in it. But the middle of that is raised up off the uh, bench because it's bowed like this. So when I, when I put pressure on the middle of it, and I push it down with my finger or my thumb or whatever, it's tight on each end. Whereas if you don't do that, you risk, uh, when you slide the plasma cutter down, you risk it spinning around. Um, so it's a good little tip just for keeping it straight. So I'm gonna cut this machine set at 50. So this will do, this will cut 10 mil plate. And I'm gonna cut three with it set at full blast. That was super quick. I can touch that straight away. Look how clean the cut is. There's no slag on it whatsoever. Whereas if I had turned that down, uh, there would be more slag on that and uh, there would be much more heat in the part. I'll show you, I'll, I'll cut it now. I'll turn that down and uh, I'll show you what I mean. Okay, I'm not gonna try and touch that. You can see how hot it is because it's actually bent the piece and you can see how much uh, slag there is on the back of there and uh, it's just a rougher cut, much rougher cut, much deeper lines. Still done the job. And you'll have noticed with that, my travel speed was really slow and in the middle there, it was actually almost still a little bit too quick. I had to slow it down a bit. And when you're cutting, when you're cutting, you'll know if you, if you travel too fast, the sound of the cut will change and you'll, you'll sort of see it catch, like where it hasn't cut all the way through, you'll get a bit of a spark shoot up out of the top of the torch. So if you've got your torch on there, you'll see if some of the sparks will fly out the top of it instead of all coming out the bottom. That's how you know that you're traveling too quick. So you can go as fast as you can until you hit that point, and that's like the sweet spot. This is what you don't really want, but rather than hit that with a grinder, best way is just to knock it off, and then, uh, and then you can clean the last bit up with a grinder. So, I mean, you would imagine that you would, you would just turn your plasma cutter down to the minimum to cut this, which you could. I'm not gonna do that, I'll, I'll go 30. You could cut this at 50, but you would be going at such a rate, you might slip and plasma cut your leg off. So a little bit of slag built up there. Comes off easy and it cuts through this rust as well. Could, could travel a bit quicker than that. I'm going to turn it up to 40 now and then go with a bit quicker travel speed. <laughs> 30 amps on this side, 40 amps on this side. Cut much quicker travel speed. 
<coughs> much cleaner cut, way less work time prepping that. So um, yeah, hopefully that shows you what I mean about that. And then when you get to your really thick stuff, obviously you're gonna be on full blast anyway, and then it's, it's just a case of really finding that, uh, the, the maximum travel speed that you can use. So that little bit there was just where I traveled a little bit too fast. And then where you have an inconsistency in the sort of gouges out of the metal, that is an inconsistency in my travel speed. Um, and then different materials cut differently. If you're trying to cut stainless steel, <coughs> stainless steel is hard to cut with whatever you're cutting it with. Same deal with plasma cutter. It's harder. To, it's harder to get through than um, normal mild steel. Uh, so you just need to slow your travel speed down a little bit. Aluminium is a little bit different. Again, we'll cut a piece of that now. Another thing I use for cutting out circles. You've probably seen this if you watched a lot of my other videos. So if you want to cut yourself a circle, drill a hole in the middle of the plate. And then the end of the torch just slots into these holes. So, you know, pretty self-explanatory. You can buy a kit that's got like a little magnetic thing, so it's got a magnet on it and you can just stick it on and roll it around or you can just make yourself one of those for nothing. I'll just show you what I mean about freehanding. So this is what I see people try and do and wonder why they're not getting very good results. So this, this is typically the type of edge you're going to get if you try and just freehand it, unless you've got some ridiculously steady hand. Uh, it's very difficult to get straight cuts and sort of particularly curves um, or straight edges like that. If you position yourself in a way so that your hands are supported, you can do a better job of it. So you can see by sort of supporting your hands and like pivoting around your hands you can get a much better cut. So I'm like, I'm supporting the torch with, with two hands, I'm not trying to float it. I'm, I'm like, and then when I cut that curve, I'm like, I'm pivoting the torch around like a point like this, this finger is resting on this finger here and I'm pivoting it around like that, rather than trying to like do it like that, it's just, you know, you've got a lot of options of, of how you can do it just by moving your hands around. All right, so I've got some uh, alley tread plate. I need to cut a piece to fit at the back of the recovery truck where there's a hole. It should be self-explanatory, but if you're working with tread plate or checker plate and you're marking out and cutting, obviously you want to do it on the uh, flat side, not the tread plate side. So this, I've actually, what, the reason that's ground out like that is so that I can use that when I'm plasma cutting. I can just mark it along and I know I'm cutting a uh, right angle so that notch is just notched out so that it, so that it will clear the uh, tip of that obviously. These are cheap enough to where if you slip and you know burn a hole in it it's not really the end of the world. So just a bit of a time saving thing if you're doing a lot of uh, cuts you want to get a nice straight square edge.
Đấy. Thế. Chỉ được là full glass. And uh, travel as quick as I can. So a little bit, moved a little bit too quick, had a few little jerky moments and you, you get, you see all of that in your cut. It does tend to do this a little bit more, I find, um, but I think that's just because it doesn't slide across the aluminium as well as it does on steel. Uh, it's, it's more likely to hook up and grip a little bit, I think. But if you look at that first cut, I did, is that it? So I was a little bit slower on that and just a bit more consistent. And now that's a really nice cut for a cut on Ali. <clears throat> that's the only issue with um, aluminium is the, you do have, to, if you're welding along the cut edge, you do have to make sure you, you clean it really well afterwards file all the sort of plasma gouge lines out of it before you try and weld it or it'll um, interfere with your weld. So I just buzz around these plasma cut edges with a grinder and a flat disc and then I can be riveted on the back of my uh, recovery truck. But yeah, hopefully that uh, helps a few people out if you've just bought a plasma cutter and you're not quite getting the results you would like to. Um, every, all the tools I've used in this video, I'll put Amazon links in the description for and uh, there's some new merchandise listed just above the comments below, um, check that out and I should have some new designs up on there by the end of this week. But yeah, that's going to be it for this one, cheers for watching, I'll see you on the next one.